All right, what's up guys? I'm so excited for everybody that hopped on the call. I hope you all had a wonderful Mother's Day. I worked really hard on this call tonight, so I'm really hoping that it inspires you, it encourages you, um, it gives you some like, hey, I'm not alone in feeling this way in my business, and just maybe some practical tips on what to do next is my intention. So um, our call tonight, our topic is on how to get unstuck in your business. Um, and I don't really have any announcements, so we're going to go straight into the call. The coach breaking news you can look over. I know I personally have been blowing up our team page like all day long. Um, so there's plenty of stuff that y'all can go in there and look and see. Um, but so I was thinking about our team and following a flash sale and I was thinking about Brooke's team and like what they're going through and I was like, okay, what is it that we need to talk about? And if you don't feel that this applies to you in your business right now, there's gonna be a season in your business that you're going to be coaching someone through this or you yourself is going to experience. So, um, because there's gonna be so many different phases of your business and being stuck or feeling stuck and lacking motivation is one that you will experience most likely. I've experienced it like more times than I can count in the last almost four years. and so. I hope that this encourages you. So the first thing, I thought about doing a really pretty slide. Y'all know I love slideshows, you know it's pretty. And in an effort to be transparent that I was like, I got on my high horse last week and said, don't spend an hour editing videos, spending an hour putting together a presentation for you guys is not a, a good use of my time. So I have the notes from the call if you guys want it for later. But um, first things that coaches struggle with when it comes to feeling stuck is that they have a lack of vision for their business. And too often, people get caught up in trying to put their coach's vision for their business on themselves or their vision, they feel like their vision isn't valid because it's not a retire from corporate America kind of vision or it's not a, you know, your coach tells you that you should do this or you see X, Y, Z other coaches that you follow they leave corporate America and they become multimillionaires and they top 10 coaches. And you think that that has to be your vision for your business. When in, in truth, you have to figure out what your goals are for you. If you don't have a clear vision of what you want to accomplish, you'll continue to spin your wheels um, and get to some unknown destination with no feeling of success because you're not even sure what you want in this business. So I, I know it may come across a little bit like Rachel, you don't really have any experience in this <laughs> because you had a really freaking strong why because you wanted to come home to your kids. Um, but I have gone through this on two separate occasions where I was not super connected to my vision and I didn't really know what I wanted out of this business. When I came home, I kind of had to reassess like, okay, I, I accomplished the one thing that I set out to do. Now, what is it that I want to accomplish? And initially, I thought, I want to become a five-star elite team. Like, that's my be-all, end-all. That's what I want to do. And in truth, that title didn't give me any satisfaction as a coach. Um, what brought me joy was fine-tuning the culture in my team and, and bringing people that brought joy to me to surround me. Um, and so my vision started to shift. And when I got really connected to what it was that I wanted and what I wanted for the people that I was leading, that's when the magic started to happen and I started to get back into a state of growth. So when you're considering lack of vision, the areas of your business that you should consider um, setting goals in are your personal health, your finances, and then your priorities and your balance. I think that so often people lack that third category and you can actually build a really successful business on an hour a day if you are focused and productive as all get out. You just have to create that standard for yourself of balance that you don't have to be on your phone all the time. And I don't want my team to feel like they have to be plugged into my into their phone because I don't want to feel like I have to be plugged into my phone. <laughs> and so you got to have clear boundaries with your priorities and your balance in line with your family, with your goals. And if there's a season of hustle that you have communicated that with those that you love, um, but having goals in your personal health and your finances. So for me, we obviously have, I have made enough to be able to come home full time. That was accomplished two and a half years ago. 
Um, and now I have to really get clear on financially what I, what I wanted for my family, but why I wanted it. And so I will share with you guys what motivates me now is my family, my parents are, have not set themselves up for financial success when they retire. Like they, at this point, they can never retire and they can never die. Um, and so I know that I am the only one in my family, my, the only child in my family that financially will ever be able to help carry the burden of our parents when they age and things go south. And so my why shifted from I want to leave corporate America to I want to be financially stable enough to where I don't feel like my parents are a burden to my husband. I want him to know that we are secure enough that if we need to take care of them financially, that we can do that. Um, and so I had to really connect with that why. Like that's what motivates me when I'm really struggling. Um, so setting that vision and setting those goals for yourself. The second piece to that puzzle is that it has to feel believable. Once you've identified what your goals actually are, and we can do a whole other call on goal setting. I'm not going to go through that tonight. They have to feel believable. You have to look at the goals that you've set for yourself, and they have to feel like you can actually attain them. If you have a dream that has been planted in your heart, and it relates to your coaching business, there's a reason why. Because that's what you are capable of. And so that dream and that vision, that goal, that is believable. Because you were given that goal and you were given that dream for a reason. You may not understand why right now and it may be hard and you may be figuring it out, but it is believable. It's okay to have this huge vision and dream for your business. Um, and I would love to hear, like, give me your one goal you have for your coaching business. Put it in the chat um, that you have for this year that you want to accomplish this year. Um, it's okay to have this huge vision and dream for your life in your coaching business, but it's okay that your right now believable moments look different than what it's going to take to get to your big goal. It's going to look different than your believable moments are when you get there. And it's okay that right now those two are different. For me as a new coach, my initial believable moment goal was to bring $200 to the table in my coaching business. I wanted to pay for my shakes, I wanted to pay for Donnie's shakes, and I didn't want that to come out of our grocery budget. So my initial believable goal was $200. Then I wanted to be able to leave my corporate job and make $1,000, I'm not making $100,000, nope, make $1,000 a month in my Beachbody business so that I could come home. And then as I just shared, my believable goal now is that I want to be able to have financial stability for our family. And there's a set amount that Donnie and I have agreed this is that comfort zone for us. And so each time I allow myself to be in the moment of that believable goal so that I could build to the big goal, so that I could build to that next step. Instead of saying that, internalizing that I'm not good enough because I didn't go from zero to 60, I wasn't that coach. I wasn't that coach that, started, that sold, hit success club in month one and two and 10. I was the coach that didn't hit success club for four months. And then I started really going balls to the wall and I started hit, hitting success club consistently and everybody's story is different, but I clung to that believable moment, that believable goal for myself because it mattered to me and I could visualize how it would change my family and our finances. So now you have your vision, right? You had a goal, you have your vision and currently where you're sitting, odds are probably pretty high. I know if it's me, that's a mountain in front of you. That vision that you have for your coaching business, it's a mountain and it literally feels impossible for you to get from point A to point B in your business. But this is a vision that you have and a belief that you can climb that mountain. So what do you do next? Your next steps are to chart a course to get to the top of that mountain. One of the common pitfalls that coaches experience is that they feel that they deserve the results in their business for the work that they didn't do. And so I want to, I want you to ask yourself, am I doing business related activities or am I doing business building activities? Cause those are two different things. Business related activities are listening to trainings, being on the national wake up call. I'm not saying these are bad things. Those are not 
business building activities. Business building activities are things like adding to your network, hey girl messages, inviting, connecting, building relationships, running free groups. Those are business building activities. Um, so take a good hard look at your business and are the activities that you're doing, are they business related or are they business building? And I'm actually in this season of my business where I have perfected the art of attraction marketing, where I know how to share my story in a way that's gonna get people to come to me. That is not duplicatable in a team. <laughs> that is not everybody's gift. However, the people who have gone before me as leaders in this company have said that these business building activities, this success club tracker is proven to work. So why on earth would I think that I'm smart enough to try and find out my own system to figure out for my team when clearly success leaves, leaves clues in these trackers and these systems. And so I'm in the middle of applying all those systems myself to make sure that I am living proof of what I'm sharing with my team and that I'm not going to hold myself back as a leader because I'm not practicing what I'm preaching. And that starts for me with business building instead of business activities, uh, business related activities, because it's very easy for me to get caught up in related stuff and not the actual business building activities. So how do you take steps forward toward your goals? You focus on those income producing activities. So what are those things that are going to actually produce an income for you and for your business? So let's, for example, if your goal is $1,000 a month, how many of you guys, if you made it an extra $1,000 a month, that would make a huge deal for your family? Show of hands. Okay, so your financial why is a huge deal. Your financial motivator and your vision for your family, $1,000 a month would make a huge impact for you and for your family. So diamond is an obvious link to that. When you're diamond, you are accruing a higher income level because you are able to tap into higher cycle bonuses. So diamond is an obvious goal for that. But in order to reach that goal, it needs to be crystal clear and obvious from your social media. We need to be able to look at your page that you are a leader, that you are training yourself to become a leader that you train other coaches to become leaders. And you are putting yourself in that leadership mentality in front of all the people that are following you because what's gonna happen, you're gonna stuck, get stuck in the trap that I had, was stuck in for a long time. I'm like one heck of a recruiter of challenge groups. I can get all the success club points on the board, but for a while there, I didn't talk about the business like I should. And so I was only attracting people who wanted to lose weight. I didn't, that doesn't help me financially. If I can attract people that want to change their life financially, that's going to get me to where I want to be because that piece that I was missing was how much joy it brought me to see my coaches succeed. And that started by sharing like a leader. If you want to be a diamond coach, you have to grow up two leaders in your downline. Now, granted, you can build it yourself, but you have to be recruiting enough to do that. But in theory, you are building up people to get to Diamond. That means that you should be able to go to your page and see so-and-so as a leader. Rachel is a leader of an organization. She is a leader of a team, and she works hard to become that leader, even if she may not have it figured out yet. Um, okay, so if you want to do that, if all they see, I talked about, if all they see is a sweaty selfie, um, then they're not going to catch on to your vision for your family. Um, if you want to lead a team of coaches that get results and change their lives and change their finances, then you, it is your job to, to show up every day and transform your life and transform your body and lead by example so that you people are like, wow, I wanna be a coach because so-and-so just got shredded and I know that all she does is talking about coaching and so obviously that's working for her. And if, if, I, if I follow her and I follow in her footsteps that I can get there too. And so you pick, you need to show them a new transformation picture every 30 days. If you don't have a new transformation in your, your personal health and fitness goals, and Kayla, you're the exception, okay? Kayla's pregnant. She's looking at me like, hashtag eye roll. Okay, you're the exception. If you do not have a new transformation in the last 30 days from a program and you have not posted that, you do not have validity in your business. And I 
I'm not trying to make this a tough love call. I want you to be encouraged because guess what? If that's your issue, that is so easy to fix. That is so, that is the most empowering problem to have. If you don't have a new transformation on your page in the last 30 days, then your job when you get off this call tomorrow on a Tuesday, you're not going to wait till Monday. Tomorrow on a Tuesday, you're going to start a new calendar of a new program, and you're going to share the ish out of that program. And you're going to say day one of 30, day two of 30, day three of 30, and you are going to be the living proof that you eat, sleep, and breathe your business because that's what coaches do. It is our job to get results. Um, so when you do, and that is considered an income producing activity because when you're prioritizing your health and your goals and your personal well-being, that is going to in turn produce income for you because people are going to start coming to you and they're going to want to know what you're doing. So when you do your EP, IPAs, your income producing activities, when you're in that state of growth, when you are on day 15 of Court of Forest and you're feeling strong, you can do those nightmare push-ups better than the first time that you did it and you're feeling good, you are feeling confident in what you are sharing. I was thinking about this earlier today and I was like, it is so easy for me to share about Morning Meltdown 100 right now because I eat, sleep, breathe that program. When I was doing Court of Force, I ate, slept, and breathed Court of Force. And so it was easy to share about it because I was eating healthy and I was enjoying the food that I was eating and I was sharing about that. When you're doing a workout and you're feeling good and those happy endorphins are there, you're sharing about that. Um, so it, it puts a deposit in your confidence bucket. And a lot of times as coaches, that's one of our biggest missing pieces is that we lack that confidence piece of the puzzle. And, and when you put confidence, a deposit in your confidence bucket, then you begin to have more confidence in your IPAs, your income producing activities. Now, when you do these activities, like your success club tracker, it gives you confidence because you're crossing something off a to-do list. Who loves to cross something off a to-do list? Is it just me? I literally will write something on a to-do list just so I can cross it off. I'm like, I already emptied my inbox, but dang it, I'm gonna write that on there because I emptied my inbox and check, that's done. Income producing activities are magic for people like us. If you have a success club tracker, you are not going to want do you are want that validation of check I expand in my network and check I sent invites and check. Otherwise, you literally feel like you're doing nothing in your business. How many times have you felt like you've done nothing and you spun your wheels in your business more days out of the week than you did? Right? And it's because you're not giving yourself the opportunity to succeed and put that confidence in your confidence bucket by checking off your IPAs. That's really important because it gives you the confidence to keep doing it. And things like inviting, if inviting is scary, you know what becomes less scary when you invite? Inviting. Because you're confident in what you're doing. You are eat, sleep, breathing the proof of the product. And so when you send that message, you're like, I just changed my life and I lost two pounds this week and I'm a boss and if they don't want to join, then it's fine. It's not on me. So you are putting that, that deposit in your confidence bucket by prioritizing yourself and doing your IPAs. Okay, so we're on this mountain. We're on this trail, right? Has anybody ever been hiking in here? I'm like so the worst person to give this analogy because I'm not, I am not a country, city, mountain girl. But if you've been, ever been hiking and you're going up a trail on this mountain, this mountain where your goals are, where you're here, here's your mountain, here's your goals, there's this huge distance to get to the top of the mountain where you have reached your goals and you feel stuck because what you're doing is you're focused on your feet, on your path. If you think about when you're walking a, a hiking trail and you're focused on your feet and all you see is the, is the rocks and the branches that you got to hop over and then this poison ivy on the left side and the person who just passed out on the right and all you do is you're focused on your feet you don't get to look up and see the beauty of God's creation. You don't get to look up and see the fresh air rustling through the trees and the beautiful view from the side of the mountain because you're so busy focused on your feet and that enables you to feel stuck. You have to learn in your business to enjoy the season that you are in right now as a coach. I feel like that 
alone has been the biggest shift in, in my business in the last year. I feel like for a really long time, I was focused on all these things I couldn't control and focused on the things that I wasn't doing right or that weren't going well and I couldn't get this goal and I failed at this and I didn't get that. And there came a point where I said, I can either focus on what's not going right or I can choose to enjoy the scenery where I'm at. And you know how beautiful that shift was? It turned me into a more positive person because I was so excited to see, okay, what can I choose joy in in my business today? There are gonna be hard days. There are gonna be days that are gonna be some rocks in your path, but where can you choose joy and in viewing in viewing your path that you're on right now. You've got to learn to celebrate the small wins along that path to get to your goals. Don't wait to feel successful. Don't wait to feel happy because if you do, you miss the opportunity to feel like you're having fun in this business. Who feels like sometimes this business just straight up isn't fun? It's okay. I feel the same way, right? Okay. So that's normal, but if you are losing sight of what brings you joy in the business because you're focused on your feet and you're feeling stuck, you're not going to give yourself the opportunity to have fun in this business again. So look at the joy in the journey, not just the joy that the goal is going to produce for you. Um, okay, so your next assignment, actually, let me look at what y'all said. Okay, so I have better footing in my finances, be able to pay off debt, be, to pay for my coaching stuff, to be able to work part-time as a nanny. Those are huge, amazing goals. And most of those you could achieve easily in the next couple of months if you focused on income producing activities instead of business related activities, if that makes sense. So next thing, drop in the chat um, something that you can celebrate right now that brought you joy in your coaching business in the last month. Give me anything big or small. One thing, drop it in the chat. Um, I want you to learn to celebrate those small wins. You should be able to look back and say, okay, this, this last, this thing that this message that I received from my client that brought me joy. Um, I had a, uh, right before this, I spent an hour and a half with a local client. She signed up with the challenge pack. Um, and she was, she's a real anxious kind of personality, super sweet woman. I don't know her from Adam. So it's kind of weird that I went to her house, but it's fine. She didn't kill me or anything. Um, and she told me, she was like, I've been following you for, since you're pregnant with Henry and I have invited her several times and she, she bought a challenge pack during our flash sale. And she was like, you helped me believe that this is a lifestyle that I could actually do and do for long term. That made me feel so happy because I was like, man, that consistency over the course of time was so rewarding, like to know that that made a difference in somebody's life. Um, so question, what is the best, you know what, this is rhetorical, you don't have to answer. What is the best part of a hike? Okay, the, the answer is the trail mix, right? The trail mix is the best part of the hike. If you don't have a good quality trail mix when you're hiking up this huge, gigantic mountain, what are you even doing with your life, right? So you have to figure out what are the M&Ms in your business? What is it about coaching that makes it fun? What are the almonds and the cashews? What fuels you up in your business? What are the raisins, the things that light you up? Obviously that doesn't correlate, well it's fine. What are the raisins, the things that light you up in your coaching business? What are the seeds? How are you feeling yourself in, outside of this business? And this is, a, this is a huge pitfall. If you're someone that's working towards a big goal, it's very easy to get burnout. Having, and this is, I've become a lot more insistent about this with my coaches. Um, I've actually had several conversations with a couple of you this past week about setting boundaries with your business time and your family time, because I do believe that that is important. And if you are not unplugging and being present with your family, or you're not doing personal development, or you're not dating your spouse, you're not going on a girl's night, you're not getting a pedicure, you're not doing the things that make you feel whole as a person outside of a coach, you are trying to pour from an empty cup and you're going to feel stuck because you're empty, because you're not feeling yourself up with what brings you joy in your life. So when you are filled up as a person, you, not Beachbody, you are your business. So if you're doing things in your life that light you up, like it brings me so much joy to spend time with my family. If, I'm the, if I have not prioritized that, I 
do not feel full as a person and I am my business. So do things that, are that will light you up so that you have an overflow in your business. The next thing is you have to hydrate yourself. So water is crucial to survival. Obviously, we talk about that in our group, so everybody needs to chug, 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 drink your water, half your body weight, da, 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 da. We know it's crucial for survival. But the number one thing to your coach survival is you, your spirit, your joy, your cup being full. That is hydrating your business in order to have an overflow to give to other people. So when someone comes to me in a rut, the first question I'm going to ask them is likely this. Are you following a program, a calendar, and a nutrition plan to a T? Because that's what fills your coach cup up. Because you're automatically putting yourself in the shoes of someone who, who is a leader and you feel confident and you put that deposit in your confidence bucket. And are you actually doing personal development? Like, it's so easy to say, yeah, I'm doing personal development, but are you taking the time to let it soak in? Are you marinating it? Are you believing it? Are you giving yourself the opportunity to overcome those limiting beliefs? Um, those two things together are going to be what makes you feel hydrated, and you're going to give from an overflow of what you are able to give to those around you. Another thing to remember is that your business and your business journey will include plateaus. How many of y'all have been on a weight loss plateau before? Hashtag, this is my life. Like, it feels like forever. Okay, so you have business plateaus. The misconception is that you are constantly, you can only go from here to here, and there's no in between. In reality, this is going to be your coaching journey. And then you're going to go like this for a while. And then you might go a little bit up and then you might go like that for a while and you're going to plateau. And that is normal. Accepting it and then moving forward is going to be crucial to the mental health of your business. Every hike has that point where you aren't quite sure if the path is going up or if it's staying the same. You don't stop if you're on this hike and turn around. You don't assume that you're going on the wrong path, right? If you are on this hiking trail and you, and you know that you're on the course and you hit a plateau in your hike, you're not gonna assume that you're on the wrong path. You're gonna know that this is part of the journey, part of the hike to get to the top of that mountain. Um, so you have to accept that it's a portion of the trail and just a season of your business. There will be times when you are in the spring of your business. I felt like this was me for a really long time, if I'm being completely honest. I felt like I was planting seeds. I was working hard to nurture them. I was working hard to grow them, to love them, to build them up, to tend for them. And I spent time laboring and laboring over that portion of my business. And then through the rain and the storms and the unpredictable circumstances that my business has given me, I continue to care for those seeds. And then eventually the harvest comes. And that's you guys on this call. People that believe in this business because I didn't quit, because I decided it was worth it to persist on a plateau because I believed that this was the path that I was supposed to be on. And then eventually the harvest comes and then what happens after that? The winter comes and you hit another plateau and you're in another season of hard. But what you need to remember is that spring does come. Spring comes in your business. And if you are consistent with your business producing activities and you are consistent with your journey and sharing, then you are going to break that plateau in your business and start to climb that mountain again. There's going to be roadblocks along the way. So it's part of life. There are roadblocks. Who has felt like they have hit a roadblock in their business? I know that I have felt that way a lot in the last year. And it's part of growing as a leader. And it's really interesting. I'm going to talk about this mindset shift in, in a minute. But those roadblocks are not a wall. They're just a boulder in your path that you can either climb over or you can walk around but they are not a wall and they are for you to use for your benefit in your business. Rocks are movable. You can get them out of the path. You can climb around them. You can climb over them. 
but a setback is a mindset the excuse me it starts by changing your perspective a mindset switch and this is what i've leaned into in the last year it's frustrating at the time that you have a rock in your path i've had so many rocks in my path a setback when you learn how to get around or move that rock you are learning something that you as a leader are going to teach your team when they feel like they have a rock in their path and i'm walking that path with some of you right now and you feel like you have this massive boulder in your life in your coaching business and you're like i can't i can't even see the path if this boulder is so big but because I've, I have chosen to view it as a perspective of growth, I'm able to guide you in that in a way that's positive for both of us. When you learn how to get around it or move it, that's what you're going to pay for. Rocks become gratitude opportunities because you can get more tools in your toolbox that are going to serve the people around you in the future. So for me, and maybe you can relate to this, a missed goal brings about emotions like shame and embarrassment. Am I right? And you, you want to achieve X, Y, Z, and you have set it out. You've even, I don't know if anybody's ever done this, but I've even gone public. <laughs> I went public the last two years saying that we were going to be an elite team in 2018 and in 2017. Guess what we were not? an elite team either one of those years you know what we did have we had all of the points to be an elite team both of those years you know what we didn't have we did not have the rank and did that become a a did i recoil and say oh my gosh i'm the worst person ever i suck at leadership i should not be a coach because i'm terrible no i said what can i do differently as a leader how can i inspire my team better how can i lead them in a way that's effective for them what can i grow into and i'm going to be freaking grateful for the opportunity to be in this freaking rock in my path and to know that i'm going to climb over that ish and i'm going to be successful and i'm going to reach that goal if it takes me 10 years to get there and i'm going to choose gratitude every single step of the way because that's going to benefit me more than being a negative Nelly. Um, so, so I talked about, um, I talked about that, hold on. I lost my voice in my nose. Um, here's another thing. Can you imagine going on a hike and picking up a huge boulder and putting it in front of like you? You went to the side of the road, hike, it's a path, not a road. You went to the side of the path and you picked up a boulder and you picked it up and you put it right in front of you. That would not make any sense, am I right? That is what you do in your coach, your coach business when you're self-sabotaging, when you're getting in the stuck mindset and allowing yourself to stay in the stuck mindset. So instead of thinking like, I am a failure, I'm not good at this, I'm not going to be a great leader, I don't know how to be a leader, because I said every single one of those, you say, okay, I am experiencing this, or I am learning through this not that you're a, fair, a, a failure. This belief system trickles into your team culture. So be mindful of the energy that you are bringing to your team's table. So if you are being the one that is, is negative about where you're at in your business, there's no problem with sharing that. But if you're the one that brings to the table only negativity and you're not providing encouragement and joy and, and a source of positivity to your team. Misery loves company. So share in a way that you're asking for help, not sharing because you're just upset at where you are. We all feel that way. But if we fuel that negativity, it's only gonna bring about double the negativity. So if you're still feeling stuck, you're probably hiking around with, I'm almost done, I swear, with a backpack full of rocks. So these are the things in your business that are holding your back holding you back. Release what's been holding you back. Recognize the opportunity for growth. These are some things that might be in your backpack that are holding you back. Maybe you're not self-aware enough, so it's hard for you to be authentic on your social media because you're not self-aware. Maybe you're overly shy and that can translate into being uncoachable. Maybe you're not willing to put yourself out there and that is not paying off in your business. Maybe you're scared of talking about finances and that's not paying off in your business. Maybe you're afraid to put yourself out there as a leader because you don't feel like one. Those are boulders that you have put in your backpack. 
that is weighing you down on your hike to get to your goals. Those rocks, they don't define you. They aren't who you are. They are just behaviors that you have learned and picked up along the way. So check your backpack and release the things that aren't serving you. These are the same things that hold you back in. So here's, here's something that I really want you to think about. The same things that are holding you back in your business are most likely the same things that are holding you back in your life. And so if you can work so hard to release those demons, release those boulders from your backpack, then you are going to conquer not just your business, you're going to conquer your life. Like Shanti says, transform your mind, transform your life. Um, and you're going to see and watch your business grow. I want you to remember, remember that it's going to be worth it. So how incredible would it feel that first time that you get a $1,000 paycheck deposited in your, ba your bank account? How proud are you going to be when you reach diamond and you believed in your heart that you're like, I am not going to make this goal, but you know what? Dang it. You worked your butt off and you proved yourself wrong and you saw that you are capable of so much more. Well, I can look back on the last four years and see all of the rocks in my path. I still see rocks in my path right now. And I, people quit. People lose rank. Coaches become negative. Months where our success club felt impossible for me. Um, my seasons where my weight on the scale didn't budge. Missing a qualification deadline. I just recently went through this, guys. I didn't talk about it much because it didn't serve anyone. I'm not here to shame anyone, and it, it did not serve me or my team. I missed a qualification deadline in order for me to be recognized at Summit. We're not even in your rank yet. So to be recognized at Summit and walk my goal every year is to walk the stage just one rank higher than the year before. And this will be the first year that I've missed that goal and does that make me a bad coach no it makes me a leader who's staying in a state of growth it makes me someone who's willing to do the hard to figure out how do I help my coaches how do I help them become successful because at the end of the day it's not about a rank it's about seeing them feel the joy of reaching diamond and that's what drives me forward those rocks, because of those rocks, I've become a more positive person and someone who leans into growth and it's helping me become a leader that I've always wanted in my life that, never, that I never had. So here's your call to action, all right? And any feedback and whatnot, and I love reading your joy statements on the right. That is just absolutely beautiful. You guys are amazing. Um, so here is your call to action. I want you to be the team encourager that you want to receive. I want you to go into your team page, whether you're my team or Brooke's team, you go into your team page and you become the most kick butt cheerleader for everyone in that group. And you shout out people. If you sign, if your coach signs up someone, you shout them out and you say, Oh my gosh, I'm so freaking excited that my coach advanced and this is just the best day ever. Never mind, tell so and so congratulations. If you yourself sign up your first person, you go in and you shout your own self out. You're like, look, I was so dead set that I was not going to hit Success Club this month. And girl, I just pulled it off of my butt this month. And I'm just patting myself on the back. Can anybody else relate? Be the cheerleader in the team page that you want, and let's get the team pages to the point where we are blowing each other up with positivity and inspired by each other every single day. That that becomes this huge, fun, like I was listening to a call, and there's this one team where every time they have somebody who sells a challenge pack or, re or reaches the goal that they were working on, like maybe that Success Club, maybe it's Diamond, their leader goes on the team page and does a dance party. And so they'll either go live, they'll do like a boomerang, they'll go on there and they'll do a dance party shouting out, and it just adds fun to the team culture. I'm not saying we need to do that. If you do that, I'm going to join you in your dance party. But let's be a team culture of encouragement and positivity and joy and leaning in so that we are, don't stay stuck. And that starts by us being the leaders that we want and showing up as a leader when we may not feel like we're there yet. So your call to action, and I'm going to post a post on the team page and give the same to Brooke to post in hers. I want you to write a list of what lights you up about coaching. What is it about coaching that brings you joy? What are the things that have brought a smile to your face about coaching? I want you to make a list about that. And then I want you to make a second list. And I want you to write down what are the boulders in your path that's keeping you 
away from your goals on this hike? Did you put them there? Are they in your backpack? Are they holding you back from reaching your goals? Because it is time. The time has come for you to let go of that, for you to figure out the way around it. You don't have to know the course. You don't know have to know how. You just have to set your mind that you are not staying stuck in your business and you are breaking free of that limiting belief that you are not good enough, that you are not gonna reach your goals because that is a lie and you're not gonna let that hold you back anymore. And you are going to grow into your goals and you're not gonna stay stuck. So you're gonna write a list of the things that bring you joy and you're gonna write a list of the boulders that are in your life um, that are holding you back from your goals. And we're gonna work hard to break free of these boulders and figure out a way around them. So that went way longer than I thought, I'm so sorry. Anybody have any questions, comments, feedbacks, concern? Rachel, you off your fucker. Who needed that pep talk tonight? Anybody? Oh, a lot of you. Okay. I want you to remember tonight you're going to get off this call and you're going to feel jazzed up. And I want you to go talk about it on your Insta stories or on your page. I want you to go use that as momentum and fuel. Put it out in the universe that you are feeling this way. And be bold in what you have to offer because you are capable of the most tall mountain goal that there is out there. And we're going to figure out a way to get you there. So nobody has anything else. Um, oh, Kayla said from the very beginning, what were the three goals? Personal health, finances, and then the last one was um, priorities and balance. Are your priorities in line in your business life it all kind of goes together um because i feel like when that's that piece is off it's hard to feel full enough to pour into the other areas of your business all right that's all next week we're gonna keep you on your toes again don't know it might be brooke next week i don't remember when she gets back i think it's soon um but i've led the past two weeks so we're gonna have i'm working on a couple of guest speakers so we're gonna have some fun there i'm making some new besties in the morning about that 100 group so um, anyways, much love to you guys. Thank you for showing up on the team call. I appreciate you, and we will see you next week. All right.